Hello and welcome to today's other Elite Sports Roundup. We're going to cover the games that took place in the League of Legends ecosystem at Worlds 2022 between Gen G and Damon Kia, and then preview tomorrow's last quarterfinal best of five in New York City between DRX and EDG. Um, first and foremost, though, we will talk about news. Down in the description, there are three links Twitter, Discord, YouTube memberships. Twitter, follow me there. I post all my links there to my content. Uh, Discord, join us. We BS about the games as they go on. And I also have my links there for all my content if that's a better place for you. And then lastly, YouTube memberships, $3 a month. You get a badge in the comment section. You support me. I'd appreciate it. $10 a month. You support me even more and you get extra content, including who I believe will win this series later on um, after this video comes out. Um, I am now 66 and 20, I believe. So we're really, really doing well, um, really crushing it. Or 65 and 20, uh, either or. Um, now, for news, uh, so some people are going to say this is old news. Last couple days I've said I'm not going to touch on it until it's official on Leakpedia. Yankos put out a video today confirming the speculation that G2 had um, allowed him to look elsewhere for a job. Flackett is also on that list, but it is not official, and he has not said anything, so I'm not going to comment on it. Yankos being out, he had a 265 KDA, 581 CS per minute, 81.8 KP in Group B at Worlds. That was the highest level of competition he played, so those are the stats I pulled. Um, 80% KP, very, very good at an international event. He involved himself in four out of every five kills for G2, as they struggled at times, or most of the tournament, but it was a tough group with... JDG, Damwon, Kia, and EG. There were no super easy games in that group for them. 581 CS per minute. Now that the uh, meta has shifted more to carries in, uh, to a degree, um, something above 5.5 is sufficient, especially with an 80 KP. So he was doing both um, fighting and, um, you know, getting farm. 14.5 kill share, 19.7 gold share. You'd like that gold share to be lower. Um, and the kill share to be higher, 14.5 kill share with a 19.7 gold share indicates that, uh, yeah, well, you're eating up a lot of gold for not getting a lot of kills. Um, five champions in six games. Obviously, uh, champion pool is not an issue with Yankos. Yankos has been around the block for a very long time, going to be 28 years old next July. Now, the player I cited after him is Alex. Uh, G2 currently have no academy team. They do have an, I believe, all-female team. But um, their um, academy team, G2 Arctic, disbanded at the end of the year. They've had G2 Heretics before, G2 Vodafone, I think, as well. Um, but Alex was their jungler, 153 KDA, 535 CS per minute, 72 2 KP. Pretty standard numbers outside of the KDA. The KDA is obviously downright dog water. Uh, 1.5 KDA is very bad. 22.2 kill share, 17.7 gold share. That is more what you expect out of your jungler. Um, obviously, the summer meta, This these numbers I pulled for him are from um, the Spanish League playoffs. Three champions in five games. I doubt G2 go internally to replace Yankos, but that is their internal option, right? Um, just my two cents on it without really getting into free agency stuff because that's going to come after Worlds. Um, I believe that I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked at all if he's in the LEC or LCS next year. Yankos is going to be somewhere. Um, whether he wants to retire with a bag of money in the LCS or he wants to retire in Europe is up to him. Um, but I believe that he will be on a team that's competitive for a world slot next year. Not necessarily a, wor not G2 level of like, potential to win worlds but you know what i mean now why are you here well it's because of gen g and Don Juan kia right so this series ends up being three two but not in a way well actually in the way that a lot of three twos happen i guess right gen g won the first two games Don Juan kia won the next two and gen g won the last one in a 45 minute affair in a team fight in top lane that looked like it was doomed for gen g Ruler and Chovy coming through at the moment they had to. It was it was something. So to kind of just go over some stats here, Chovy, 27, 15, and 10, 29% of Gen G's damage. Ruler, 16, 6, and 22 in the 80 carry roll. Showmaker, 
for down on Kia, 11, 12, 30, 28% of damage. Canyon, 16, 13, 25 in jungle. So um, there were two Kane games played. You heard me right, Kane. Um, we, we had Canyon pulling out a Kane in game one and game five, and it drew a ban in game four and game three. His Kane was disgusting and kept down on Kia in this series in game five in a big way. Um, you know, this was a, a hot potato of inting draft back and forth. Uh, you know, Gen G getting Yumi in the first two games was kind of sus. Yumi is an auto win, right? So they're winning with Yumi. So Damwon Kia going into game three say, well, we're going to ban the Yumi. Now, mind you, this is after, like I said, Kane really did very well in game one. Um, gapped Peanut. Peanut looked out of the both teams, out of all 10 players, Peanut was definitely the worst player. Um, followed closely by Doran. Doran also played atrocious. Um, his NAR in Game 4 and Game 5 outside of one solo kill on Showmaker in what would have been like, what, nearly an hour of game time. I mean, not hour, but an hour and a half of game time. Um, his ultra missing, he was awful. But Peanut got gapped by Canyon consistently. Um, Canyon's cane was a big, big problem. And... Then in game three, Gen G, so Dom Monkey said we're going to ban the cat. They ban the cat, and then they put Duck Dom on a Felios into, into Lucian Nami and into Jinx. And they win both times. I mean, they're just like, okay, well, Duck Dom, his best champion is a Felios. So that was, that was just giving them comfort. Showmaker was doing his job. Canyon was a menace he had a viego game where he was a menace he was a very very good player in this series probably the best player between the two teams definitely 1v9ing doing all he could um going into this game he was you know playing like one of the best junglers in the world he is still one of the best junglers in the world um Nugri, at times a little sus in top lane but the renekton at one point in, in i believe it was game four um, was very impactful, getting a couple kills in the early game with Canyon. That kind of set them on the right track, obviously, with five games. Um, you know, I could be mixing things up, but there were, I mean, it sticks out to me at, you know, level three or whatever, double kill in top lane. That really um, set the tone in that one. But game five, so that's really all that matters, right? The first four games is tied two to two. How do we get to game five? What happened in game five? Well, Peanut got gapped by Canyon again. Um, Canyon on the, on the cane took Raptors, took red and peanut in Canyon would share the Krugs, literally share the Krugs. Um, and I don't really know how to react to that. I'm trying to get that across to you, but they, if you watch it, they legitimately share them and then they share them again. Um, as uh, Canyon would steal peanuts camps again. Um, and at one point it was 42 to 21 in the jungle. Um, however, Peanut was able to keep up an XP, which allowed him an opportunity to succeed. Um, Gen G were not giving Canyon and Damwon ample opportunities to gank, which was a big deal because the transformation took forever for Canyon to achieve. It was a big deal. That was a big, big deal that allowed Gen G to get the first couple Drakes. Uh, third Drake, they would lose, then they would take the next one. They'd go to Soul Point, and then... Um, There'd be a couple situations where Canyon would steal. Canyon would steal a Baron, I believe. I believe he stole a Baron and a Drake or two Drakes. He had two steals. Um, and it was a ba Baron and a Drake. And uh, the Drake matched Soul Point. Um, and, you know, there were moments in... The, there's so many moments in this in this Game 5. I mean, Showmaker had a beautiful four-man on Syndra when uh, Gen G thought he was out of it. Um, they thought they had a 4v2 opportunity, turned out being a 3v4. And you would think to yourself, well, still, if they have four and they have three, they should win. But Syndra's um, ultimate was, was spot on and um, honestly was a massive, massive deal. Dealt a ton of damage. There are a couple ultimates in this in this series where Dom won, like uh, Duck Dom's Aphelios, I think, in game four, dealt a ton of damage to end the game. Like, it was, it was disgusting. But... Game five ends up being decided in top lane where Gen G are cornered around the um, alcove almost on the uh, 
Damo and Kia's side of the rift, on the red side of the rift, like they had nowhere to go. They were going the wrong way. And it was a 5v5, and they were in a corner, and they fought their way out of it. Um, uh, Ruler had, I believe, a triple kill. Uh, Chovy dealt a ton of damage on the victor. His victor was online. Obviously, a 45-minute victor is going to do a lot of work. And um, in doing so, I mean, Genji, come out. Come out ahead and win. Now, how do I feel about this going into semifinals? Well, I don't know if Gen G are quite on the level of JDG and T1. Doran, like I said, was very, very sus on the NAR in Game 4 and Game 5. It was awful. Um, he is a liability. And against 369 and Zeus, that is a massive, massive, massive liability. The meta has gotten away from Gen G. I had Gen G winning this 3-1. Obviously, 3-2. I, I hedged my bets. You know, I, I mean... I really thought Gen G was gonna. This was gonna be a, a close one, but wow! I I mean, leading into tomorrow, right? We have DRX and EDG. How can we really match this? Um, they've never played before. There's no history between these two teams on the Rift. Obviously, Deft has played for both teams, but outside of that, um, you know, we have we don't have DRX versus EDG. Obviously, Zeka and Scout have played against each other before, and um, that's a thing, but that's not. That's not really, well, it's, we might get into that this week. No, they're playing tomorrow. You're not going to get into it this week. Regardless, preview. They've never played before, so what's the deal here? Well, I got the junglers listed, Pioshik and JJ, and you're going to see yourself there on the screen, right? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. That's that's good. That's good. I was afraid for a second that the recording wouldn't have it. Um, both much maligned junglers, two that have been pulled from the lineup recently in the last month, month and a half in the playoffs. Going back and forth, Pioshik and Juhan, JJ and Junjia both seem to have the role now, right? Um, Pioshik, very coin flippy. JJ, very coin flippy. And it depends which one plays better. Um, this meta definitely fits Pioshik well. Um, I think that the, the carry meta is something Pioshik can thrive on. Or JJ, not so much. Um, as far as other roles are concerned, I think Flandre has a massive edge over Kingen in top lane. Kingen is not very good, in my opinion. Flandre is not quite a player that's going to dominate lane, um, but he, he is, he's, he's very, very solid, right? I don't expect him to really, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to expect him to, to, to um, put Kingen in a hole, but I think it is a possibility. Um, in mid, it's close. Depends which version of Zeka shows up. If it's the carry confident Zeka, things may be interesting. Otherwise, Scout probably has a slight edge. And in bot lane, EDG definitely has the edge on paper, right? But I didn't put Deft and Viper here, but this is where Deft has to show up in a big way. His veteran C has to show up. His leadership has to be on point, and he has to really, really, really make something happen against Viper and make own bot lane. Um, I would expect Ash Heimerdinger tomorrow. Um, but nevertheless, my prediction will be in my members only video and that's it for my LOL esports roundup for today. So if you liked it, like the video, subscribe to the channel for daily league of legends content, share it. If you do enjoy this content, sharing it allows my channel to grow, which allows it to be self-sufficient, which allows me to continue to do this. You get the idea of what I'm trying to say here. I need to make money to be able to do this content, right? Um, if you would rather become a member, which also will cost you more than just simply sharing this. You can become a member of the channel, follow me on Twitter, um, join the Discord, and thank you for watching.